Yeah, in my situation, I went from being a very healthy athletic individual in uh, 1991 to becoming um, quite uh, disabled by the end of that year. Uh, and uh, I lost my ability to talk properly, to think straight, to read properly, to retain information. Uh, most system, systems of my body were affected and nobody had a, any idea what it was. And it took me several years to get a diagnosis of Lyme disease. Uh, and once I got the diagnosis, uh, it was a struggle getting uh, get, getting um, an appropriate level of treatment figured out for my situation. Once I did, I recovered, uh, I would say, 95% of my health. Uh, and then, unfortunately, in 2001, my uh, daughter uh, contracted Lyme disease. And I contracted mine on the East Coast in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And my daughter contracted it here in British Columbia, where we had moved to, uh, along with other kids in our community. She wasn't alone. Um, anyhow, she struggled to get a diagnosis. And, and uh, luckily, with my experience already, I was able to pursue it aggressively and, and get her treated. Uh, she was unfortunately left with a permanent pacemaker, but after uh, aggressive antibiotics uh, over a, an extended period of time, finally got her her health back, her life back, her brain back, and uh, was able to go on. And uh, she's now a very successful uh, um, career woman and doing very fine with a lovely, healthy, young 10-year-old boy. Um, so that was my background, and that's what prompted me when she became ill to look at the situation nationally in Canada. There were several groups uh, provincially, uh, but uh, I thought we needed at that time a way to connect nationally so that we could become a larger voice. So that was the impetus behind the creation of, of CanLime, which was started in 2003. So, and, and I knew right from the get-go that uh, we had to come at this from a, a, a point of science, um, or else we were just going to be looked at as a bunch of talking heads. So I approached uh, various uh, academics within our institutions in Canada who were who, who had anything to do with Lyme disease. So Dr. Ruben Kaufman, who was uh, in the uh, zoological department of uh, the University of Alberta, who he was studying the tick, the exodes tick that transmits Lyme disease. So I uh, invited him to join my board, and he did. Uh, George Shaconis was uh, the Canadian Research Chair for the Molecular Biology of Lyme at the University of Calgary. He joined uh, our board, as did uh, um, Dr. Satyan Banerjee, who was the retired head of vector-borne disease for the BC Centre for Disease Control, who was actually one of the first people in Canada to start raising the alarm because of what he was seeing through his lab uh, at the BC Center for Disease Control. He joined my board. So we, we started uh, out of the gate with, uh, with an impressive bunch and uh, we progressed from there. Um, my concern is, is, of course, how things progressed within the medical institution itself. And, and uh, what, what I saw as a very poor level of what they were calling evidence being taken as evidence and uh, directing our healthcare guidelines relative to tick-borne disease. So that was an undertaking of mine that uh, uh, encouraged me to uh, proceed forward and keep it going. And here we, here we are today still still struggling to get uh, proper evidence-based science into the curriculum of our uh, uh, medical schools and, and those of our nursing colleges and whatnot. So 
here we are, but I think things are progressing and uh, hopefully we're on the right track.